Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soul Seekers Podcast. This time I am joined by a organization that I truly support 100%. I've done a few Instagram lives with them and how for wildlife. Remember that hashtag hunting is human and it is our job to advocate that across every domain of this world. For us to shout it from mountaintops, the prairies, and the concrete jungle of the urban life because we need to fight right there, right there. So this episode is all about catching you up on what's specifically happening in the state of Colorado. We have Mark from CRWM, Colorado for Responsible Wildlife Management here, along with Mike Costello and James or Charles Whitwam. James, thanks James for being here. Yeah. I appreciate it. How are you doing? <laughs> Who's James? Jim, call me Jim. I like to be called Jim. Thanks, actually. Jimmy. Yeah. So uh, we're we're going to be talking all about. Well, I'm not going to be talking. I'm going to be listening so that you guys, as listeners, get to actually hear what's happening and why it's so important. So without further ado, brother, take it away. Well, Johnny, thank you. Appreciate that, and appreciate uh, you and our friends at uh, at Hal for Wildlife for for everything that they do. Uh, Colorado continues to remain to be um, an epicenter for the fights on uh, wildlife issues, trying to make changes in the, the hunting and the fishing world. Um, it, is, it is so viably, via, it is so important that we're able to, to talk about this today. The latest that we're seeing right now is there's two ballot measures that have been introduced um, in the state of Colorado to ban mountain lion hunting, uh, bobcat hunting, and lynx hunting. Uh, those are proposed for the 2024 uh, ballot measure season this, this fall in Colorado. Um, we've seen a lot of attacks previously in the state legislature. Uh, this had been uh, fought off uh, previously through a number of attacks on uh, uh, legislation that had been introduced. But this year with these ballot measures, uh, wanting to really restrict and, and bypass the legislature, bypass the regulatory process, take this directly to the voters to see, all right, do we want to ban um, hunting of mountain lions, bobcats, and lynx in the state of Colorado? And the answer from Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management is the answer is no. We absolutely do not. There is a reason that we need to be able to hunt these animals. Uh, the science tells us that we're supposed to from a responsible management perspective and and going out harvesting animals, having acceptable management levels, all of the things that we know within the North American model, really being able to look at that and drive this home is so critical. So we're starting early. Uh, we've already started to begin um, engaging in this process. Again, thanks to our friends at, at Howl for Wildlife and, and engaging with their community. And, and Johnny, again, with you and the Soul Seekers out there, we really appreciate all that you guys are doing. Uh, but this is gonna be a long, hard fight. We've got a lot of uh, steps along the way that we're gonna be doing, but we've started early now. We're Great to be here at SHOT Show in Las Vegas, um, getting the word out to the hunting community across the country, talking about the need to uh, be looking at what's going on in Colorado. Because if it's coming to Colorado, it's more than likely gonna be coming to a state near you here over the next couple of years as these move and shake across the country. I, so I, I just wanna say something real quick because first off, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you guys for, for putting in the effort and the, the energy because somebody's gotta fight and everybody needs to get involved. Yep. But I will say, really interesting, I lived in the state of Washington and I moved to Texas and I started to get plugged in in the hunting community in Texas. And people in Texas are like, well, dude, our hunting's not being attacked. What, like, it is. Right, it is. It is. And everywhere. what is happening in Colorado makes a difference, but they're not conscious of it. Right. It's not being mainstream talked about beyond the borders of Colorado or the, the you know. Well, and, and you look at the issues, people look at, well, it, it's Texas, it's, it's, it's a good state, it's, and, and everybody, no, we, we love hunting, we love fishing down here. Well, the demographics are changing yeah. across the country and, and people are moving. And, and we're seeing the, the exodus from California, we're seeing the changes from across the country. They're moving into other states, they're moving into to Idaho, to Montana, to Wyoming, to Texas all right, but they're bringing their politics with them and some of these ideas that are then changing our demographics. We've been seeing this in Colorado and other parts of the country are starting to see it now that we've already been seeing it for 10 or 15 years. Mark, that point aside, HSUS, PETA, all the, the anti-hunting industry fundraises nationally. The money that they're going to spend on this campaign to ban mountain lion bobcat hunting, which will eventually lead to other big game hunting bans in Colorado and other states, doesn't just come from Colorado. And that's where they win. They, they take a national or global 
money pool and focus it on where they think there's a point of weakness and they go after it. So we as a hunting community, outdoors, wildlife, conservation, everywhere we are, we're all past, present, or future hunters of Colorado. I have points in Colorado. I may not hunt mountain lions, but I want to hunt mule deer. I want to hunt elk, right? Right. Well, right. who eats the mule deer? Mountain lions do. And so we're all future hunters of Colorado or wherever this initiative is going to go next. And we need to beat it there. And so we need to, we need to pull out the same playbook that they've been using for, for the last couple of decades. We need to fundraise and work grassroots level. We work, need to work in the industry and bring everybody together nationwide. It's not, oh, look at poor Colorado. It's like, oh, look, they're attacking the hunting community. They're attacking the angling community. They're attacking the outdoors public lands use community. Mm. And so this is something that everybody needs to say, we're gonna get involved. I mean, what's a box of ammo cost these days? 50 bucks, gas, take a <laughs> gas, much. 100 bucks. <laughs> right, well, yeah, it's too much, but, but really when you get down to it, anybody that even daydreams about going to Colorado to hunt, the investment that they can make in winning this, because we are gonna win, is a, a, it's a pittance compared to the investment in time, money, and focus that we give to just going there and enjoying the hunt. Right. And it's, uh, it's something that we're rallying. So that, and I think that what, what we're seeing right now is, is people, um, last week we were at Sheep Show, Wild Sheep Foundation, thank you to Wild Sheep. They stepped up and within a very short notice, let us throw in a, a mule deer hunt that raised $50,000 in their auction. Elk hunt. Elk hunt, sorry, I keep saying mule deer. Mule deer, I, I love mule deer. I, I love honey mule, mule deer. You're a muley guy. Yeah, so uh, elk hunt, $50,000. Um, so one of the conservation orgs basically let CRWM get involved and do some direct fundraising in their event. That's the kind of collaboration that we're looking for from the industry, the other NGOs, the other conservation orgs, and then every hunter, whether a coyote hunter, a bass fisherman, a mule deer hunter, <laughs> bear hunter. We've all got to get involved. What about trout fishermen? Trout. I, I respect <laughs> trout fishermen, especially fly, <laughs> catch and release fly fishermen. Bow so, fishermen. Yeah. So we, need, we basically, this is not a Texas, oh, look at Colorado. We're sorry. We all have to be involved in this. And right now we're awakening and the community is really starting to rally. And uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a win, but it's going to be hard. And we're just going to have to go and realize that when we talk to ourselves, we're talking about hunting. When we're talking to the the middle of the road non-hunter voter that loves animals, we need to talk to them in a language that they that they understand. You know, there's 5,000 mountain lions in the state of Colorado right now. When big game hunting of of mountain lions was introduced, there's only 200. So over a period of 60 years of hunting of lions, the population's grown 25 fold. Mm. Hunting helps critters, but the average non-hunter doesn't know that. So we've got a lot of deal, a lot of dialogue points to share with them. Just like how the average uh, non-hunter doesn't know that you actually can't even hunt lynx, right, in North America, but yeah. yet it's on, it is on the, the the but ballot it's, it's initiative. On, it's on the list. It's one of the ones that they want to uh, restrict. And lion is edible. In fact, one of the one of the reasons that nobody knows about how good mountain lion is. Because all the mountain lion hunters that have been eating lion for the last 20 years don't share it with anybody. <laughs> They're like, here, take some elk, take my mule deer. Yeah. I'm keeping my lion for myself. They it's edible. Yeah. And their campaign straight up lies, straight up lies to the non-hunting public that it's inedible. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a flat out lie. But that's where they, they, they have to win on rhetoric and propaganda. Okay, so speaking of propaganda, we have to defeat it. And we defeat it by speaking the truth. What are some talking points, bullet points that people can be like, I can memorize this and I can spitball it out to people and have it be impactful? Well, Johnny, that's, it's a great question and, and I appreciate that. And, and to build on what Mike was saying, really the biggest thing is, you know, this is, we need to be looking at this from a science-based perspective. Let the science help manage the wildlife, not ballot box biology. This is flat out ballot box biology. We're gonna let the elections drive science. That's not what we need to be doing with, with our mountain lion and with our wildlife responsibility and uh, management. We need to be looking at this uh, from, from that science level. What, what do the wildlife biologists say is the, the right way to do it? As Mike was talking about on what we've seen over the last 60 years on the improvements of uh, our wildlife population and, and mountain lions. So that's number one, no, mount, no ballot box biology. Number two, 
being able to look at it and not let out-of-state interests come in and tell me what's going to happen in Colorado, whether it's from HSUS or any of the other um, anti-hunting groups that are out there in the communities. We need to, to speak up and stand and say, this will not stand in Colorado. You guys cannot come in here and tell me what we're going to be doing in our home state. I grew up in Colorado. I am very proud and very passionate of, of the work and the opportunities that we have to, to hunt and to fish and to recreate in Colorado. But our out of state act, these out of state activists cannot come in here. And third and finally, we need to look at this from what actually needs to happen on the ground. And, and how can the communities across our state and across the country be looking at it going, this can't come here. We have to stop this now. And if we don't stop and completely change the narrative now and start talking about it from a science-based perspective and just talking about it from the facts, that hunting is conservation and that, that mentorship is conservation uh, within this community as the soul seekers are looking for uh, within that. How do we bring that together so that people truly understand, yeah, no, this actually makes some sense, that it is okay to go out and hunt, same as it is to go out and cut down a tree so that we have a healthy forest. The same applies with wildlife so that we have a, a very healthy and robust wildlife population and it's not out of balance. Mm. And I think, you know, one of the other things that, that we see and, and that we have to work through, you know, we, as I mentioned, we're, we're starting early. This thing, there's a lot of time between now and the November election on is this going to make the ballot. It's my hope that this does not qualify for the ballot and that because of all of the great work that we're doing uh, within the wildlife community to bring, bring this to bear, that Colorado residents and Colorado voters won't sign the petition to put it on the ballot and that they're going to say, nope, we think this is a bad idea. We're not going to sign that petition so that when those petition papers are due later this summer, they don't have enough signatures to put it on the ballot, which means we don't have to vote on it in November. If we do that, that's a huge win for the hunting and the wildlife community in Colorado, because then we don't have to take it all the way to that election in, in the fall, but we can say, guys, this was stopped here. This was stopped at the beginning, yeah. and, and it was stopped before we had to vote on it. Can we move past this now and move on to other more important things that we need to be dealing with in our society instead of trying to ban something that has been part of our heritage for so many generations? Mm. So that's, you know, as we're working through the different steps, the fight is now, and if we start this early, it's going to be a lot better than if we have to take it all the way to November. Awesome. I love that. Talking points. What, what are, I'm putting you on the spot right here. What, what, what do people say? Because I feel like this is the issue with hunters is they're so silent, the silent majority. Well, the, si the silence is a lot of hunters feel like they're gonna lose. Like, and I, I think, you know, gradually, if you look at state or county or, or federal, like we feel like there's been too many losses. Mm -hmm. I talked to a, a hunter at the sheep show and he's like, I, I get, need to get out to Colorado this, this year to hunt because we're gonna lose. I'm like, no, we're not. We're not gonna lose it um, because you're gonna step up and fight it with us. And so we can't have a fatalistic attitude that everything just goes away, goes, goes against us because it doesn't always go against us. This issue, three times at the commission in Colorado, one time in the Senate in Colorado, and we've won that. And so we, we can win these battles. And so from the hunting community, we can't sit back and wait till the third quarter to see if we got enough points on the board to say if we're gonna get in the, uh, into the field. Like we have to get on the field today, like before the game starts, we need to get into the arena we know that the rule, we don't like the rules, but whatever, the rules are the rules. We need to get in the arena and we need to be able to play and play the entire game. And so we're looking for grassroots act activation right now, we're looking for hunters in Colorado that are willing to like walk their neighborhood, talk to their coworkers or neighbors and the family that let them know what their values are. They mm -hmm. don't want them to vote for this. Um, and we need, you know, bluntly, we need industry stakeholders and, and other NGOs to, to really step up the fight. Mm -hmm. We need, we need everybody that's listening today to go talk to five of their friends that, that don't listen to the Soul Seekers podcast and say, guys, here's what you need to know about this and here's actually what's going on out there. When I, when I work on campaigns and, and I do those all over the country, when we're having these conversations, I, would, I am shocked at the number of people that, that don't know about a certain issue. Right. And they're like, well, I just assumed that, that you knew everything and that you knew what this issue was as an informed voter. And it's funny how they don't. So as we're looking at it, you know, to your point on talking points, no ballot box biology, number one. Number two, looking at this, and we've got to keep out of state interests. Those are the two biggest components that we have, uh, being able to work through it. That's what we're seeing right now. This has nothing to do with what's on the ground in Colorado. I love that. Uh, Charles, <laughs> a.k.a. Jimmy, you just handed me uh, something. Would you want to read this or you want me to go over you, these you points? Read it. Okay. So this is from Hal for Wildlife's Mountain Lion Talking Points and Colorado, sorry, CRWM, uh, Mountain Lion Talking Points for Social Media Influencers. 
FYI, just in case you don't consider yourself an influencer, everyone has a sphere of influence and yes, you get yeah. to uh, make the big time where you are at. 100%. That's it. So, be the leader. Uh, yeah, be, be the leader of your own life before you uh, follow the sheep to uh, the slaughter. All right, here we go. Uh, number one, these proposed initiatives pro prohibit Colorado Coloradans? Coloradans. That's a hard word. That is a hard word. you guys come up with something new? It's not Coloradians. <laughs> it's not Coloradans. Coloradians. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Coloradans. I apologize. It just, it rolls off the tongue. It's so easy. Arkansans is a lot right. harder, I think. Arkansans. Like, Arkansans. How do I say that? When you read it, you're like, yeah. Arkan Arkansans. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm going to start that over. Yeah. These proposed initiatives prohibit Coloradans from enjoying their outdoor heritage. Okay? There you go. Number two. These proposed initiatives are being supported by out-of-state celebrities like that mother trucking Carol Baskins <laughs> from Tiger King who thinks these big cats are pets and not predators. Okay, well, we all know what uh, the Tiger King thinks of her. Uh, <laughs> extreme animal rights activists such as Baskins do not support sound wildlife management practices. They don't. All right. Number three, these proposed initiatives put the health of Colorado's wildlife populations, particularly deer and elk, in serious jeopardy. My mule deer. See? Yeah. Yeah. We can't, we can't, we've got to manage that cat population because I want to hunt mule deer there someday. Oh, man. I mean, who let the cat out of the bag? Anyways, come on. All right. That, that was a bad dad well, joke. Well, I don't know. That yeah, bad. that was really wow. bad. Did you just say your last name? <laughs> Close. <Whitman>. Whitwom. <laughs> Wah, wah. Oh, okay, guys, sorry. I, I'm taking a serious issue and, and making light of it. I apologize. It's the end of the day. At least you said my last name right. Yeah. It's Whitman. Jimmy. Like, I should change it to Whitman. Yeah. Everybody says Whitman, <laughs> so I'm, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I care, so, you know. Yeah. All right, number four. The hunting ban replaces a North American model of wildlife conservation with ballot box biology that will destroy Colorado's other wildlife populations. I want to pause on this one for a second. This is a huge issue that I personally, it's an assumption. I'm assuming that the majority of hunters and people within the outdoor industries actually don't even know what the North American model of wildlife uh, management is. Yeah, I don't want to pick on hunters like that. Yeah. I mean, how many people can recite the Ten Commandments at will? How many people can can quote the Bill of Rights at will? We know inherently what it feels, what what the principles yeah. are that are baked in there. I and like so, that. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah. So I don't want to right. kick. I don't want to kick the hunting industry around for not being able to recite verbatim the I mean, seven I principles. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I can do most of them, but, but you know, the bottom line is we know that as participants, we're regulated, it's legal. There's people that tell us how many animals we can take off the landscape and we trust them to make the decisions. Um, we know that we need to, to harvest with purpose and consume the meat. And we know that it's, it's the most ecologically and economically sustainable system there is. I don't know if very, I just hit very well. five of it, the seven or not, but the bottom line is that's what we all feel. Like we yeah. feel those things and we know that it's happening and we trust the system that we're, that we're paying into to take care of the details. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's where Mike, and Mike, as you were hitting it earlier, where you've got, you know, the, the meat is edible. People don't think that mountain lion Including meat is mountain edible. Lion. It, mountain lion meat is edible. There's, there's plenty of recipes on it. There's plenty of great opportunities for it. And it's not like, so, it's, not like it's edible like cabbage. Like, people love it. People actually, yeah, they do enjoy it. It's not, this is not just about the trophies, which is what this opposition is trying to do, and talk about it of just, oh, well, they're only out there to, to have these beautiful mounts um, in, their, in their game rooms. No, this is about harvesting and, and doing the, the hunting heritage that we've, that have been done for generations here in the United States yeah. and in, in, the, in North America, looking at it, but taking the meat and harvesting it and utilizing that meat is what's going to happen and what people are going to be doing um, as, as they're hunting mountain lions anyway. Yep. So we're completely within it and our opposition doesn't recognize that. Yeah, and also about the North American conservation model, this removes the model from participating in mountain lion management and it replaces it with nothing. Like it literally, if you, if you, <laughs> they vote on this to remove hunting as the primary mechanism for mountain lion management. Um, there is no mountain lion management. Right. And, but, and it, but mountain lions will still die. Yes. Mountain still lions will die. still die to the tune of hundreds a year, but they'll be killed quietly, silently, and behind the scenes by Colorado Parks and Wildlife contractors 
probably at a cost of five or 10,000 a pop, instead of an economically sustainable system where hunters pay to just have the opportunity to go hunt. So we lions a, still die. Yeah, and we have a real, real world example of this. Um, California banned mountain lion hunting, 82, 81, yeah. some, some time ago. We have the data up until 2019, there's been eight to 9,000 mountain lions have been killed by contractors or CDFW. Uh, Nobody saved mountain lions from dying. Yeah, the lions fact, still die. more lions are killed throughout that time than when we could hunt lions. <laughs> right, right. There's different reasons for that. Maybe they become more of a problem species because there's no pressure on them and all that, but lions are still dying. Yeah. So you're not saving lions. You're just you, removing you, humans you, from the, you're moving hunters, humans, from participating in something that's completely natural. And the very people who voted to ban mountain lion hunting, their tax dollars are, are, funding are now going to kill mountain it. lions, where before hunters paid into the system, ate the mountain lion. Yeah. So what did they accomplish? Right. And, and that's, that's just about understanding, I think, the groups who are behind it. They're all about fundraising. Yeah. Well, I love that. It's not actually about saving anything. Uh, quickly, we got, uh, I'm going to read two more, and then we got like one minute. We're going to wrap this up. Um, so if this ban passes, then the regulated hunting of mountain lions, as well as regulated hunting of and trapping bobcats, not lynx, because it's illegal already. <laughs> and it's important to note that it's not it's illegal because of the they're listed on the Endangered Species Act. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is not a state thing. That's a federal component, just for, for everybody as a reminder. Very, very good. That this will devastate other uh, wildlife populations like deer and elk. Uh, hunting, the hunting of mountain lions and bobcats, like you guys just said, is about practicing the North American model of wildlife conservation, which is regarded globally as a gold standard for wildlife, wildlife conservation. So um, just real quick, any last, last thoughts that you guys uh, want to hit? My biggest thing, one, Johnny, Charles, Mike, thank you. Biggest thing, get engaged. Go to uh, SaveTheHuntColorado.com, get engaged, help us out there. We've got a donate button. If you can give $5, $10, we'd love to have that opportunity. Um, our talking points are all on there. Let us know if you have questions uh, through our portal on, on what we could need. But be looking at it, not only what's going on in Colorado, but these there's uh, hunting and fishing issues in, in Washington and Oregon and other parts of the country. So take a look to see what's happening in your part of the world. Um, and if it's happening, get involved early so that it doesn't get passed like happened in California, as happened in other states. Get out in front of this early because that early engagement is what's going to make all of this work. Right. Anything else, gentlemen? Save the hunt, Colorado.com. Send them a check. Whatever the cost of your uh, your basic box of ammo is, send that in. There you support, go. Support support the win there that we're going to get, and uh, and just become engaged and active through Hell for Wildlife. Yeah, follow us on Hell. Um, we do a fantastic job at getting out the the information, the issues, whether it is happening in Colorado or Washington or where it might be, um, and we are. Uh, be a part of the movement. We are building a, a, a national movement here where, you know, what we are accomplishing, if you are aware, if, you're, if you've been paying attention to what we're accomplishing in Colorado, we're going to take that state to state. We're a multi-billion dollar industry. I mean, we're here at SHOT Show right now, but as, right. as sportsmen, we are a multi-billion dollar industry. And quite frankly, we shouldn't have to go around begging for money because you're not giving us money. All of us need this support. Right. We're, we're, we're investing in ourselves here. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to change that on a national level. So uh, if, if we do, we would be an absolute monster to deal with. And we, ha we have an army we just haven't used yet. Right. And that's what we got to do. We just got to train them up a little bit. Got to train them up. Train them up. And that's uh, what we're doing. And we're going to be solid. Website, one more time. SaveTheHuntColorado.com. SaveTheHuntColorado.com. Also, go to Howl for Wildlife just to stay up to date with all sort, howforwildlife.org right. uh, for all information regarding all states. But SaveTheHuntColorado.com. Guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode. Remember that you get to be the change that you want to see in the world. It starts with you. You got to put your own oxygen mask on first before you start saving others and putting theirs on. So be blessed. Remember that hunting has the power to transform lives through primal adventure and that mentorship is conservation. I'm Johnny Mack for the fellas here live at SHOT Show. Be blessed, freedom on, and as always, stay soulful.